The first job to tackle with the wheel castings is to clean up the flashing that we can see on the spokes and on the inside rim here. A bit of filing will be required to clean all that up and whilst I'm at it I'll try and remove any other big lumps that may hinder me when I get on the lathe. I've got a boring bar set up in the tool post as we can see but I'm not doing any boring at this stage, I'm just using it as a pointer. The idea being that I set the fore jaw so that the inner rim here runs true. Or as true as can be expected given it's a casting. I should note that from here onwards I carry out all the operations in batches. So I'll complete the same operation for all six wheels before moving on to the next operation. This becomes quite important when it comes to turning the tread diameter so I can ensure that all the wheels are the same. To face off the back of the wheel I'll go with some big chunky cuts to make sure I get right under the skin of the casting. Underneath the chuck I do have some cloth and also a bundle of rare earth magnets to try and collect the swarf but I give up on that idea later on and just crack on without it. On the casting the centre hub stands proud of the rim so I tackle that separately but ultimately I face off the back of the wheel all the way from the outside into the centre with one final cut. As I did for the back side of the wheel, I also set the front side to run true. In fact, it's more important on the front side because this is what is visible. To face off the front of the wheel, I've got three surfaces to deal with. The boss for the crank pin, which is sitting proudest here, the center hub and the rim. Because it's sitting the proudest, I deal with the crank pin boss first. Then I face off both the boss and the centre hub. And then I do all three faces together. The centre hub needs to be 1.6mm proud of the rim, so I carry on facing off both the rim and the boss for the crank pin, put a finish cut on those and then put a finishing cut on the centre hub with that 1.6mm offset. For the axle holes I follow my usual approach of centre drilling, drilling with increasingly large size drills up to 13mm in this case and then bore into final size. On reflection this was probably not the best approach and I think I would have been better off reaming to size rather than boring. This is the final wheel which I actually bored quite nicely to size as we can see it's quite a snug push fit but unfortunately for two of the wheels I did go slightly oversized. Whilst facing off the rim on the front of the wheel I noticed it wasn't running parallel with the back face on the other side. I shouldn't really be surprised given the quality of the standard kit that came with this lathe but it now presents a challenge that I need to get this wheel running true both on the front and the back faces. On the plus side I do know that the front face is running true or running square to the bore from the last operation. So I've got some 16mm bar held in the collet chuck on which I've turned a shoulder of 14mm as I've done for the axles. So I can now fit each wheel onto the bar, clamp it in position and face off the rear side of the wheel knowing it's going to give me a nice parallel run with the front. With the wheel rims now running true front to back the next job is to get on and face off the boss for the crank pin and at the same time of course facing off the spokes. The boss needs to be 1.6mm recessed from the wheel rim. I'm using the same setup as for the last operation but with a boring bar to cut from the inside of the rim all the way down to the centre hub here. I 
I notice that Don's design for the wheels does not have a taper on the tread. I'm quite surprised at this, but I am going to put one on, so I would actually cut a two degree taper on the treads of each of the wheels. However, before I go on to the final cuts, I rough cut each wheel to get under the skin of the castings. In doing so, I also rough cut the thickness of the flange, but I don't deal with its diameter just yet. With all the wheel treads rough cut, the next job now is to cut the taper and put the finishing cuts on both the tread and the outside face of the flange. To do so, I fitted the compound slide and set it at two degrees. I've only done that by eye on the scale on the front, so nothing too scientific, but the same cut will apply to all the wheels, so that's not an issue. I've also locked the carriage and I'll apply the depth of cut by the top slide, but of course use the compound slide for the actual cutting. I'm only showing the final cut here, but I did actually have six mil to take off the diameter from the rough cut wheels. The key point here though is I've set my cross slide dial to zero and for all subsequent wheels the finish cut will be at the same diameter. When I reach the flange I then back off on the cross slide and put the finish cut on the outside face at the same time. I'm almost done now with only a couple of operations to go. First I turn the flanges to diameter and round them off. For the latter rather than use a form tool I just use a file. And for the final operation I put a slight champ from the front edge of each wheel. I just use my little index tool here, set roughly at 30 degrees to a depth of around about 1 mil. The outcome of a lot of hard work is a set of six wheels. I am very pleased with the outcome. Cosmetically I think there's a bit more I can do. I can soften up the edges on those spokes, round them off a little bit with a file and some memory. Next I think I'll cover off the crank pins, both the turning of them but also the drilling and fitting of them to the wheels and possibly securing the wheels to the axles with all the joys of having to quarter the wheels correctly. As always, thanks for watching.